Hello and welcome to Week in Review on Trust Television. My name is Martia Umar. In case you missed any of our updates, news updates for last week, this is an opportunity for you to catch up. But we'll start with a really sad story where tragedy struck at Bonival Nimbi Jetty in Patakat City and local government area of um, River State on Monday's early morning fire got at the jetty and several persons, including a pregnant woman and a toddler, were reportedly burned to death in the fire. Take a look. Eyewitness account says several fiber and wooden boards were destroyed in the inferno which started at about 2 a.m. on Monday from a local boat that arrived from Brass to Port Hackett late Sunday night. As I just did inside the boat, I'd be asleep. My wife just get up, just call me. As she called me, now I run go the back. I tell them, make them follow me, run go the back. They no run come, they run go the front. As they run go the front, me, I jump and enter inside water for the back. I no can see them again. Since last night, now I no see them. My nephew was, they were among the boats that were coming from Brass. They landed there, they said, according to my mom, they were here, boats exploded from another boat, in that escalate or enter the other, the other two boats. But now my mom, we've rushed her to hospital. She has some bruise on her body, bones on her body. She's in BMH. So we came back to look for the little baby, two years old baby. At the jetty, while narrating their ordeal, said the effect of the disaster is usually massive due to lack of firefighting equipment and emergency services. They appealed to the River State Government to build a fire service station close to the jetty as promised to avert future occurrences. Acting Manager, National Inland Waterways Authority in Port Harcourt, Abraham Ogu, said there is need to sensitize the boat drivers and travelers on safety measures. People to come and vote for them and they cannot come and look what is happening. This thing started around 12 o'clock in the night. We did not see fire service, nothing. It is the boys area here that struggle to quench this fire. Do nothing. But my annoyance is that place like this, we are supposed to have something like fire service. Not for the governor to be building a flyover everywhere. We need fire service here and place that can accommodate passengers. If you come back in the night, you can pass the night there. Just because we don't have where that passenger will pass the night. That is why you see most people died inside the fire. I've lost everything. Good thing you are seeing what is happening on the jetty. You are seeing people property. You are seeing matured men being naked. That is just for property alone. No? We did not talk about souls. Souls we've lost, small and big. But we'll give God all the glory. I think for now I'm speechless. The cause of the fire is still not known. However, previous fire outbreaks at the jetty had been attributed to the story used in powering the speedboat engines in makeshift buildings within the slum. And now we move to another sad story in the Maryland area of Lagos State uh, where a fire incident occurred. It was gathered that the fire incident started from an electric pole close to Independence Bridge on Ikorodu Road. According to eyewitness reports, the incident caused a gridlock in the area as passengers, residents and passerby scampered to safety. The fire is at, at, at that time was yet to be contained, but no live Fortunately, was lost as injuries, but injuries were sustained at the time of filing this report. Those cars were here. Where I come fall or something. Can someone did that side? And away from Lagos State, community leaders and security agents in Kaduna State have dismissed the viral video that surfaced online and last week, which insinuated that soldiers had killed and arrested some bandits in the Kakura area of Chukwun local government area of the state. Trust TV gathered that the alleged suspects who were being pushed into a military van were not bandits, but Fulani residents of a nearby community who became victims of mistaken identity when some vigilante groups attacked them while trailing bandits. The report. After a peace meeting between Fulani, Hausa and Bagi people in Kaduna, the State Commissioner of Police, Yekini Ayoku, maintained that what happened in Kakura community was a case of mistaken identity, following the killing of one Isha Yakarfi, a brother of the village head of Kakura. 
He said bandits had tried to abduct Erfi, who resisted and was shot dead in the process. So with the narrations of both sides, it was now discovered that it was purely a case of mistaken identity, where the vigilante of the community now clashed with the Fulanis who are in search of their rusted cattle, rusted by the bandits. So in the, in the, uh, in the course of the clash, uh, some of these uh, Fulanis, uh, were, three were killed and uh, a number were injured. And uh, the information got to the uh, military detachment in the area and they uh, went for rescue and they took the injured and the, uh, the dead to the hospital. Uh, presently, the injured are now in the 44 reference hospital, military hospital, being treated. And that's the correct situation. So these people who are taken to the hospital are not bandits, but rather both sides are victims of bandits. According to reports, after security agents rescued them, two hospitals in Kaduna rejected the victims, even though many of them were critically injured. Soldiers were said to have rushed them to the 44 Nigerian Army Reference Hospital, where three were confirmed dead and 17 are now being treated. Fatima Salaladen, Trust TV News, Kaduna. And one of the biggest stories of last week was that police in Denver State rescued 39 kidnapped victims who were abducted in March and early April at the various villages of Bungudu and Maru local government areas of the state. It has also arrested 10 suspects for different offenses and recovered locally fabricated guns and car, among others, in the state. Let's take a look at the report. The 39 kidnapped victims rescued by some for state police command included 15 nursing mothers, 8 males and 16 children. The commissioner of police in the forest state, CP Ayuba Elkana, explained that the 39 abducted persons were rescued during a police and military joint clearance operation at the Barmagaji camp, located at Kadanya Forest between Kaura Namuda and Maranu local government areas of the state. The Zamfara state police command under my watch has recorded another landmark achievement that comprises the unconditional release of 39 kidnapped victims, arrest of 10 suspects, including members of the outlawed group, popularly known as Yansakai, recovery of locally fabricated guns, one stolen Honda vehicle, 2012 model, and four motorcycles, and other exhibits during various police operations across the state. He said the police apprehended 10 suspects who included three kidnappers in connection with the abduction of two persons at Fakun Idi area in Talata Marafa local government area of Zamfara State. The three suspects are Babangida Yusuf, Ibrahim Lawali, and Abdesalam Abubakar. The CP disclosed that four out of 10 suspects were members of vigilante operatives who are terrorizing innocent marketers at Dogon Kane Market in Koranamoda local government areas of the state. The police said it will charge the suspect to court after investigations are concluded. It cannot thank the people of Zamfara State for the synergy with security agencies, especially the police, and assured of the commitment to ensure security and safety of residents of the state. And we're still looking into the train attack. And now that the federal government has set preliminary reports on the Avuja train terror attack has revealed the impact of collaboration between the bandits and the dislodged Boko Haram terrorists. And speaking in Abuja, this report was uh, one of the investigations that was made. Let's take a look. Devastating attack on the 28th of March on a Kaduna-bound train in Katari, Kaduna State, continues to draw public attention. But then it was followed up by attacks in Play 2 and Benue states in the last two days. It has drawn a lot of flack for government, and especially the president who is being asked to resign. Ministers of Information Lai Muhammad and Defense Bashir Magashi are trying to reassure the public that the security agencies are working to ensure that these attacks do not happen again. Honestly, I think the, the security chiefs are working hard to unveil those who are involved, and I will tell you very soon the people that are carrying out these activities. All Jaws and uh, Kaduna will come to inform the public what is really going on and our efforts 
to ensure that all these activities are stopped. Why has there been a surge in terrorist attacks in the last month? There is a kind of unholy handshake between bandits and Boko Haram insurgents. And uh, the preliminary reports of what transpired at, uh, the, at, you know, at the Kaduna train you know, attack shows that there's been a kind of uh, uh, you know, collaboration between the bandits and the, and, and the, dis, and the dislodged Boko Haram uh, you know, fighters from the northeast. Government is still relying on citizens to exercise patience and keep faith in it. But Nigerians have fast run out of patience, and keeping faith may be an even harder thing to do. From State House Abuja, Kainde Amudu, Trust TV News. And families of abducted victims of the Abuja Kaduna train attack have called on the federal government to open dialogue with the terrorist group that abducted their loved ones. This, the families believe, will ensure the safe return of their loved ones. Fatima Sali Laden has more details. Take Representatives of the families say they have been in trying times since the abduction of their loved ones. They want the federal government to not only hear their plight, but to take concrete steps to address it. From the videos that have, been, that have gone viral, they insist that yes, government knows what they want. Because we, in any ground that you go, you expected that yes, you'll be expecting call for ransom. But since it's not coming two weeks after today, then we are praying and we believe that government can be able to come in and come to our rescue. Uh, but the hope now is that from what we saw in the video, they are seeing very categorically that their interest is to discuss with the government. It has left them on their own without any vital information or communication and called for a dialogue between the federal government and the terrorists to be initiated as part of efforts towards securing the release of their family members. What is the state, what is the condition of their staying there? Nothing of comfort. They are sleeping in the bush, on the bare grounds. Their lives are being endangered to things that you can never imagine. Even the United States of America sometimes do enter negotiations, do enter discussions with, with uh, terror groups, you know, to, to, to protect the interests of, their, of, their, of our citizens. Talk to the families to let us know, at least allay our fears that something is being done about uh, this happening or this incident, but nothing has been heard. So we don't know anything, nobody contacted us, it's just silence, we don't know what is happening. And it's clearly, uh, it seems clear that uh, these abductors have the grudge with the government. It's not between them and us. We are ready to do anything within our powers, whatever it takes to secure and bring back our family members. It is exactly two weeks since the attack on the Abuja Kaduna train that left some dead, others injured and scores abducted. Families of those abducted continue to hope against hope that their loved ones will come back alive. Fatima Salaladen, Trust TV News, Kaduna. And still talking in security, various crises in Nigeria said they have displaced 3.3 million Nigerians from their homes. The Vice President echoes Misha Finta Koroma made the assertion during a stakeholders' workshop on the best practices for stabilization in West Africa. The report. The ECOWAS Commission, in partnership with development organizations and governments, has embarked on a journey of introducing interventions designed to stabilize conflict-affected areas in West Africa. The Commission will also address the root causes of insecurity and set them on path for sustainable development through recovery and building community resilience. The Vice President, Finde Koroma, said this became necessary following displacement crisis in Burkina Faso, where the militant group's violence originating from Mali displaced 1.2 million people. 
and in Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation, violent attacks by Boko Haram in the northeastern Nigeria have resulted in the displacement of 2.5 million Nigerians, while kidnappings, extortion, and organized criminal attacks in the northwest Nigeria have displaced an additional 800,000 people. Finde Karoma said ECOWAS, in partnership with the German government, has established ECOWAS Fund for Regional Stabilization and Development in Fragile Member States to stabilize conflict-affected communities through provision of sustainable economic opportunities and essential services for conflict-affected communities and construction or rehabilitation of key national infrastructure. In Abuja, Fatima Sanusik Arai. Trust TV News. You're watching Week in Review. More reviews after the break. Do stay with us. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic, and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. You're still watching Week in Review. If you're just tuning in, this is where we talk about some of the biggest stories that occurred in the past one week. And moving on to more stories, angry passengers on Wednesday attacked the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport office of Max Air, destroying items. The attack was lent that was due to flight delays from Abuja to other parts of the country. Reports say that some passengers that were scheduled to travel as early as 9 a.m. were still at the airport till 6 p.m. with no words from operators of the airline. This is the plight of passengers at the Nnamdi Azikwe International Airport, Abuja. And you bastard that don't send anything. I look at me. You should not qualify. I have free. It's not what you should fly. How can you keep us here? One, one thirty, two thirty, four thirty, six thirty. You keep us here. Mark's air check-in counter is destroyed as angry passengers complain of staying several hours in the airport. For many passengers, this is unprofessional for an airline operator. As at the time of this report, none of the Max Air operatives was on ground to answer the plight of these passengers. And retired workers in Weaver State are lamenting what they call poor handling of the welfare by administration of the governor, Yesamwike. This followed the alleged failure of the governor to pay them their pension arrears and gratuity. The retired workers said that the state government is owing them accumulated gratuity and pension arrears running into hundreds of billions of naira. Let's take a look at the report. The River State Coordinator of Nigeria Union of Pensioners, NUP, Loki Ati, who spoke to newsmen in Port Harcourt, regretted that many of them have died, several sent out of their rented apartments, while their children have been sent out of school due to inability to meet their obligations to the schools. 
Ati, insisted that they will be happy to support the presidential ambition of Governor Wike if he pays their seven-year pension arrears and pays those who are yet to be captured on arrears. As at April 2021, when the report of the Tripartite Committee was submitted, government was owing over 190 billion. River State government, yes. And from that April 2021 date, people are retiring every day. I am being owed for 42 months. So that 42 months and my gratuity has not been also paid to me. Our retirees are left at the mercy of continuous protests for their rights without any positive response from the government. Governor Wike has held the payment of what is due to our retirees without remorse. We, however, enjoy the governor of River State to make deliberate efforts to pay our retirees their gratuities and pay pension to our pensioners. We have witnessed repeated protests by these elders who have served the state with all their strength and time. And the way from River State calls for concerted effort that will ensure that street and homeless children are not ignored in national priorities formed a part of the campaigns that heralded the marking of the International Day for Street Children in Abuja. Members of the Young Ambassadors Against Drug Abuse Initiative, YADA, made the call during a walk to the National Assembly to drum support for street children by calling on lawmakers to address issues affecting them. Trust TV's Aisha Saliu was there and she filed in this report. The walk was, among other things, to draw the attention of lawmakers to the plight of street children, abuse of human rights that comes with being on the street, as well as sensitize the leadership of the National Assembly on the relevance of the day. I feel that the legislators have a lot to do, you know, and one of the issues that is affecting us that we're not even getting it right is the fact that we do not even have a data of how many street children we have in Nigeria. And if you do not have a data, how do you address a problem? While addressing the children, the lawmakers assured that laws will be enacted to address the issue of street children and human rights abuse and urge the children to be good ambassadors of the country. Ours is to provide solutions to problems. And we can see from the placards that you are holding the issues that are very germane, very fundamental to the heart of the Nigerian child. Issues of education, issues of security, issues of health, issues that have to do with uh, gainful employment for our parents to be able to cater for our needs. But beyond inclusion, you also need to make up your minds to be good children, to be good ambassadors of our country, to follow the rules, to follow all those things that are right. Lawmakers at the National Assembly here in the Federal Capital Territory and other relevant stakeholders are promising social inclusion to these street children among other demands that they are asking for and they also say that there will be elimination and total eradication of the street children in the country. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And now to legal matters, the prosecution of Abdul Malik Tonko and two others in the alleged murder of five-year-old Haniva Wubakar in Kano has been completed at State High Court in Aldobarko Secretariat. The prosecution counsel say a total of nine witnesses have so far been presented before the court and were thoroughly cross-examined by the defense counsel. Presiding Judge Justice Usman Na'abba adjourned the case to 9th and 10th of May 2022 for the opening of the defence. So our witness who testified on the last adjourned date was cross-examined today. And then uh, we also uh, uh, brought in our last witness uh, who also testified and was cross-examined. And then the matter has been adjourned to the 9th day of uh, May, 9th and 10th day of May. Uh, they defense. brought the two witnesses the PW7 and 8 and um, that led to deliberations as regards the trending of a document which for obvious reasons once the court rules on that you respect it and we allowed it to go naturally but we told them 
apart from this bus stop we meet somewhere. That's why we're taking the case very serious. You have to prove your case beyond reasonable doubt. That's why we're taking all this stuff, because if we just take it for fun of it, there will be as if we're acting drama. And court is not supposed to be looked in that form. And now to political developments. In the week of the week, the vice president of Nigeria entered the race amongst people who are aspiring to become president in 2023. And one of the key messages was that he wants to continue with what the APC has started. Let's take a look. Dear Nigerians, for the past seven years, I have served as vice president under a true Nigerian patriot, a servant of the nation in war and peace, and a man of integrity, President Muhammad Buhari. We have, together, worked through some of the most difficult times in the history of our nation. But we have remained focused on securing the country, on providing infrastructure, and growing our economy. As stipulated by the Nigerian Constitution, our tenure will end next year. In this period of seven years, I have served the government in several capacities. I believe that the very reason why the Almighty God gave me these experiences, these insights, and these opportunities is that they must be put to the use of our country and its great peoples which is why I am today, with utmost humility, formally declaring my intention to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the platform of our great party, the All Progressives Congress. If by the grace of God and the will of the people I am given the opportunity, then I believe that first we must complete what we have started radically transforming our security and intelligence architecture, completing the reform of our justice system, focusing on adequate remuneration and welfare of judicial personnel, and ensuring justice for all and the observance of the rule of law. And that's the much we can take on this week's edition of Week in Review on Trust Television. Join us next week for more. My name is Martia Umar. Thank you for being a part of Week in Review.